still discussing the analysis of one categorical variable, and right now we're in a discussion of statistical inference. So the last time we spoke about a formula for a confidence interval, which is one type of statistical inference. Generically, that formula uses a statistic plus or minus some margin of error, where margin of error uses a multiplier times a value called standard error. Now, standard error is a measurement that's new to us. So we talked about in sampling distributions how there's variability amongst the values of p hat. And we talked a way to measure that variability would be through standard deviation, whose formula is shown right here. However, the problem is, is that this particular formula uses p, which if you recall is the notation or the value for the population proportion. Now when you're making a statistical inference, you actually won't know p, because to know p we would have to have the entire population. And if you're making an inference, you're using a sample to make a conclusion about a population. And so to get p, we would have to have the whole population. So we will have to substitute p with the next best thing, which is p hat, which remember is the notation for our sample proportion or our statistic. So in the formula that's shown up here, we're going to replace all of the p's with p hats, which would give us the following. When you make that substitution and you put in p hat in place of p, the term is then no longer standard deviation, but standard error of the sampling distribution of p hat. So that gives us another piece of information for our confidence interval formula. So on the next page, we're very close to having it be complete. The statistic that we have right now, if we're calculating a confidence interval for p, is p hat. We just gave ourselves the formula for standard error, which is p hat times 1 minus p hat all over n. And then we will have a multiplier that's called a z star. z star is coming from the normal distribution. So we talked about in the sampling distribution information in that lecture that we know it will have that normal distribution if n times p and n times 1 minus p are both greater than 10. So within that normal distribution, we know the cutoff points or the multipliers that will contain 99, 98, 95, 90, and 80% of data, for example. So if I ask you to calculate a 99% confidence interval, you would use this as your multiplier. So essentially we are getting 99% of the confidence intervals, including P. So you'll notice as you increase in the confidence level, your multiplier will also increase. And that happens because if you need to be more confident, you also need more room. So on that normal curve, let me remind you, that indicates that as you're increasing in percentage, you're going to be moving out towards the tails and therefore including a larger area or percentage in the inside. So I've given you some steps that are the same as what's shown in your textbook in terms of how to calculate a confidence interval. So first you'll identify the population. So who do you want to talk about? And then you'll identify the sample. So who's going to answer the question about the population? Then you'll state an assumption. So here we're always going to assume that the sampling distribution of the sample proportion p hat um, is the normal distribution. Now, in order for you to make that assumption, two things have to be true. 
So similar to what we did with the sampling distribution where we had n times p and n times 1 minus p having to be greater than 10, we will do the same type of thing here. But remember, we don't have p. Instead, we have p to 2 p with p hat, just as we did for the standard error formula. So if these two things are true, then we know that our assumption about the normal distribution is correct. Then in step four, essentially the whole part of it is getting you to calculate the confidence interval. And remember, we're calculating a confidence interval right now for P, which is our parameter of interest. And then we will be using that confidence interval to make an inference on the population. And when we make an inference on the population, we'll talk about how confident we are, which will connect to the confidence level multiplier that was used in the top of the page. We'll also state what I will call our parameter of interest and then the interval itself.